So if you're anything like me and you'd like a bit more structure in your planning or bullet journaling system, then I'm going to show you how I made my own notebooks from start to finish. This whole project took me about three hours to make and only cost me under 15 pounds. And I love the fact that you have control over what paper you choose, the dot grid, the colors, materials, and so on. You can use each insert for a different purpose and you can also use the system along with the bound notebook that you might already be using for your bullet journals. All right, so let's get into it. We're gonna start off with making the inserts. So the first step would be to choose what kind of paper you want. Think about the supplies you're gonna be using. For example, you might want to go with thicker paper if you plan on using markers or watercolors and so on. I chose to use paper from a sketchbook because I wanted minimal ghosting and bleeding. And this paper is A4, so that will give us A5 notebooks. But again, any size paper that you have will work. I made my own dot grid in Photoshop because I wanted it to be really subtle and you can see how much lighter it is compared to my old notebook. So I will have this grid as a free printable on my blog, which I will link in the description. Print the dot grid on both sides of as many pages as you want to use. I used about 10 sheets per insert, which is going to give you a 40 page notebook. Then start folding every page in half. I'm using a bone folder for this, but you can use anything with a dull edge, for example, a ruler or a butter knife. Insert the pages into each other, making sure that they align properly and then set them aside. Next, we're gonna choose the cover for the inserts. I'm gonna be using some 12 by 12 cardstock, but you can use any type of paper or craft paper that you have on hand. The length of my cardstock was already good. I only had to measure the same height as my paper and then trim off the excess. Fold the cover in half and then put all your pages inside your cover. Use some paper clips to hold everything together and then we're gonna be making the holes for the staples to go in. So measure the width of your staples, mine were about half an inch, and then measure one inch from the top and bottom of the paper, and from there measure the width of your staples. Using a push pin or an owl or something sharp, punch holes on the markings that you made. You can punch through both sides to make sure that the holes are big enough for the staples to fit right through. Next, take your staples and fit them inside the holes. This might be tricky, so just wiggle them around until they come through the other side. Use something hard to fold in the staples on the inside and you're pretty much done. Just make sure you give the notebook a fold one more time and play around with it for a bit to help it lay flat. Once you're finished, you might notice that the edge of the notebook won't be as straight as the ones that you buy from the store. That's because of the way that the pages are folded inside of each other. If that bothers you, you can take a ruler and carefully trim the edges, going about one or two pages at a time. But keep in mind that that's gonna take off a bit of the margins from your dot grid, so I decided to leave them as is. If you want to protect the corners of the notebooks, then you can use a puncher to round them. This is of course optional, but it does help prevent damage to the corners. All right, so repeat the whole process until you have as many notebooks as you need. It probably took me less than 10 minutes to make an insert, so it's a really quick process to make new notebooks whenever you need. But if you ever don't have the time or the patience to make them, then you can buy refills in all shapes and sizes, and they're pretty inexpensive, so I will have some linked down below. Moving on to the fun part, which is making the cover. And the first step is to choose the type of fabric you wanna use. I got this pleather from my local fabric store. It was really inexpensive, but whatever material you decide to use, make sure it's got a bit of a sturdiness to it. Mine was flimsier than I would've liked, but I'm gonna fix that by doubling up the material. So with the right side of the material facing down, measure the length of the paper you used for the inserts and then add about two and a half inches. Then measure the height of the paper plus an inch allowance. 
This is just going to ensure that we have room to adjust the size of the cover later on. Now it's time to carefully cut out the piece of material and make sure you don't throw away the excess material because we're going to use that later on. Then I'm just going to measure this again and cut out one more piece because I want to double it up. But if your material is thick enough, then you don't need to do this. To bond the two pieces of fabric, I'm going to use a special adhesive called Heat and Bond, which is made for bonding fabric. It comes on a large sheet that I'm going to measure and cut to the size of my plather. Place the fabric with the right side down and then place the heat and bond sheet with the textured side down. With your iron on medium heat, iron the heat and bond for about 2-3 seconds on each area. Once cool, peel off the paper backing and that's going to leave a shiny surface. At this point you normally want to add the second layer of fabric and iron it, but the pleather that I was using had a weird texture on the inside and when I did a test sample I found that it just wouldn't stick. However, I found that if I applied the heat and bond on both pieces of fabric then it worked much better. So I did the same thing with the second piece of pleather and then I put them together with the shiny sides facing each other to prepare for ironing. When ironing these two together, make sure you protect the surface of the pleather with some kind of fabric, otherwise the pleather would melt or burn. This time you're going to iron it for about 8 seconds on each area, and again make sure you don't keep the iron on for too long because you might melt and ruin the texture of the pleather. At this point the edges were looking a little rough, so I gave them a quick trim to make sure they were all nice and clean. Now it's time to get your inserts and start trimming off the excess. So the height of the cover is going to be the height of the notebook plus about an eighth of an inch on the top and bottom. So go ahead and trim it to size and then place all of your notebooks inside the cover, fold it over and see how much you need to trim off the length. This is why we left so much allowance because it's much better to have to cut off the excess than to realize that the material was too short from the beginning. And also, if you mess up the edges like I did here, then you can just trim off a bit more to get a clean edge. If everything looks good, then we are ready to start making the holes for the eyelets. So for that, you want to find the middle of the cover and then measure about one centimeter from the top and then one centimeter on either side. And then do the same for the bottom of the cover as well. So I didn't want to spend money on a fabric hole puncher just to use for this project, but I did find a way to make the holes without one. So what you want to do is place an eyelet in the center of the marking and then give it a few hits with the hammer. Take out the eyelet and you'll be left with the perfect hole. Then you're just going to repeat this process for the rest of the markings. Find the center of the cover and make a hole there as well and this is where the elastic closure will go through. When you're done you should have three holes at the top and bottom and one in the center. Next you're gonna need either a tool or an eyelet plier to set the eyelets and I'm gonna show you how to use both. So fit the eyelets inside the holes from the outside to the inside of the cover, though in my case it didn't really matter because both sides were the exact same. Place the tool on the other side of the eyelet and use the hammer to set it. If you have eyelet pliers, this will work as well. Just give it a good squeeze and you're done. For the hole in the middle, it's really easy to set it with the tool, but if you're using pliers, then you can still make it work. Just bring your cover to the edge of the table, open up the pliers and use a hammer to set the eyelet. The eyelets are of course optional, but they do help protect the material from getting damaged by the elastic, plus it gives it a more polished look. Finally, I'm tracing a rounded cap to help me round the corners, and I'm just using a pair of scissors to cut them off. Next, it's time to add the elastic, so measure about 5 times the height of the notebook, just to be sure. With the inside of the cover facing you, feed the elastic through the top middle hole and pull it through. Then go through the left down to the bottom. Next, insert the elastic through the bottom center and then all the way through the top center once again. 
Finally, go through the top right hole all the way down to the bottom right and then bring it through the bottom center. Make a knot with the tails of the elastic but don't tie it too tight just yet. You do want the cover to bend just a tiny bit. Open your notebooks in the middle and insert them through each of the elastic bands. Make sure everything is nice and secure but not too tight. Adjust the elastic as needed and then secure the knot and trim off the excess. For the closure I'm going to make a little flap that will prevent the elastic from denting the cover. So I measured and cut two rectangular pieces from the excess pleather that we used earlier. Use the heat and bond to iron them together, clean off the edges and then use the same process for setting two eyelets on either side of the flap. Then take a piece of elastic that's about two times the width of your cover and with the right side of the flap facing you, insert the elastic through the inner holes of the flap and then through the outer ones. Feed both ends of the elastic through the center of the cover and tie a loose knot. Bring the closure over the cover and play around with the length of it until you find a good tension. After that, secure the knot and cut off the excess. And then you're done, and this is what it should look like. When you open up the cover, you'll notice that the flap might get in the way. So one tip I have for you is to place the flap so that it hugs the spine of the cover. This way you won't feel it when you write in your notebooks. The cool thing is that you can also insert bound notebooks like the Leuchtturm inside the cover and then use the other inserts for collections or anything else. So to do that, open the knot and feed the elastic through the spine of the notebook. Tie it off and then insert the other notebooks. Because we fed the elastic through the spine, the notebook still lays flat and the elastic won't bother you as you write. Kara from Bohoberry uses a similar system, so I'll have a link to her channel in case you want to see her setup as well. So I'll end this video with a couple of tips that I've learned while making a few of these covers. So first I recommend that you use some small pieces of fabric to first test out the adhesive you're going to be using and make sure that it works. Make a few holes and set a few eyelets just to make sure that you get a hang of it and that you don't run into any trouble as you're making the actual cover. Another tip is to make sure that you don't make the cover too short like I did with my first one. So it should be about an eighth of an inch longer from the top and bottom of the inserts. Otherwise the elastic is going to bend over the corners and the notebooks will tend to go up and down and so the corners will get damaged. The white pleather does get dirty pretty quickly but you can clean it off with a wet wipe or a damp cloth. If you're worried about getting it dirty, then it's better to go with a darker material, at least for the outside of the cover. Alright guys, that is it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and I do hope you give it a try. I will have a breakdown of all of the steps and a list of materials in the description, so make sure you check that out. And also, if you do end up making one for yourself, please tag me on Instagram, I would love to see it. Alright, until next time, take care. Bye guys!